We've all seen it done, and maybe some of us have even done it before. And what I'm talking about is texting while driving. Now, not only is it illegal in many states, there's also the question of, well, why? What's the problem with it? What's the danger of texting while driving? And the danger is that it distracts us. It distracts us from what's right in front of us, what we're supposed to be doing, what we're supposed to be prioritizing, and that is driving our car. And the problem is, is that when we get distracted, that can often lead to really bad situations. Some major consequences, even fatal consequences, that if we just hadn't gotten distracted, it wouldn't have happened the way that it did. And so I want us to think about us on the road of life. What are we warned against about some of the distractions that we might have in our lives or that we might be tempted to get distracted with that we're warned about in the scriptures? Now there's plenty to choose from, but I want to focus on three here today and just to throw them out to you, see how they apply for your life, apply them to yourself, and think about even some other ones. What are some other distractions we might face on the road of life? So let's first look over in Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 40. It says, But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. She was distracted with serving. Now, housework is not bad. That's not what Jesus is saying. <laughs> we should all do the work around the house that we need to do. But Martha was focused so much on it that she was distracted by what was right in front of her and what was most important. She was so focused on making an experience for Jesus that she got distracted from experiencing Jesus. Let's look at another passage, and this is just a couple chapters later in Luke chapter 12, and starting in verse 13. And again, a well-known passage. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do, for I have nowhere to store my crops? And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns, and I'll build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things that you've prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Material goods are not evil. Money is not evil. But what Jesus is talking about is focusing so much on material goods that it distracts us from what we should be doing with them or where we find our pleasure. So do we use what we have to the glory of God? Or are we just storing up and storing up and storing up? What distracts us oftentimes is material stuff, materialistic things. Let's look at one more passage. And this is in Luke chapter 14. We're going to look at verse 25. Now great crowds accompanied him, 
And he turned and said to them, If any one comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, and yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Now again, relationships are not evil. We should love our family, right? <laughs> Jesus isn't saying that. Jesus also, I don't think, means hate here the way that some people use the term hate. But the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what or who do I prioritize in life? Is Jesus my number one relationship? Because he should be. Do I love Jesus above all others? And so, there are many things that can distract us on this road of life. And as fatal as texting while driving can be, we can also get distracted spiritually. And that can lead to something even worse. And so what I want to encourage you today is this. Do some self-inventory. Do some self-reflection. Think about the things that distract you from seeing Jesus. And ask yourself how you can get refocused on Him and how you can limit the distractions so that you can live the best life possible to bring glory to God. I hope you have an awesome rest of the day, and may God bless you.